The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Lady Ada use her powers of engineering every single week to find the things that you need. It's tough to find things because it's a global art shortage. Lady Ada, what is this week's Great Search? Okay, this week's Great Search is, you know, I had a, a couple Great Searches where we did, uh, you know, alternative searches. And then I went to like, oh, I'm like, like trying to find some chips and stuff uh, that I want to design with. And now I'm back to alternatives because I'm, I'm seeing like the second wave of part shortages where... Um, I believe that there are parts available, but they're not being allocated necessarily. And so, you know, we have a lot of parts that we've ordered, um, and the lead times are still a year. And now I'm actually seeing them stretch out to two years. Um, you know, I was, I was looking at like a MOSFET that, you know, we use the DMG 30, 23 or five, I think, uh, which is a nice little SOT 23, um, P FET for a lot of our boards that we use as like a little you know, ideal diode type thing. And, um, you know, it's a MOSFET, you know, it's like, Hey, most generic common thing. Um, but it has 89 week lead time. And so there's a lot of parts that are again, common that are hard to get. We got a bunch of shipments, but it might be a while till we get in our next shipment. So, um, this week's, um, the great search is about the, um, AP 2112 K 3.3 which is our like super favorite low dropout regulator. We use it in like everything. Um, we used to use the MIC 5225, which is also still a great regulator. And we use that on a lot of boards. Um, the AP2112 has very low dropout and also can do 500, 600 milliamps of current um, easily from up to six volts. It's, you know, great. it's very stable. It doesn't need a bypass cap. It's a great little regulator. And once we started using it on our boards, um, like our feather boards, for example, um, all use the AP2112, we're like, well, like instead of stocking, you know, it's cheaper than the MIG5225, we don't need that 16 volt input for all our STEM QT boards. Let's just move everything to the AP2112. That makes manufacturing and stocking easier because we only had to stock one LDO. We've really only used one LDO for pretty much anything that needs 3.3 volts. Um, and that's totally awesome as long as you can get that part, which we can no longer guarantee. And we use a lot of them. I go through over a thousand a day of this LDO because it's again used in like everything we use in all of our breakouts and our feather boards. So we, we're not out, but we're worried that we might run out before the next shipment because we're, what we're seeing is you'll get a ship date and that date will start getting bumped and bumped and bumped. You know, you thought you're going to get it in June. You're actually not going to get to August and then it goes to November and then it goes to January of next year. And so we needed to find something alternative that I could, you know, to have as a backup so that we wouldn't be like stuck because um, the, the regulator is good for up to 500, 600 milliamps, which we definitely need for like our Feather ESP32 boards. They can use a lot of current. So all our Feather boards, I want to keep that regulator. But for our breakouts, we don't need 500, 600 milliamps. A lot of them can get away with 50 or 100 or even less. Very few even need more than 100. Most of our sensors are very low power. Um, you know, they sip power and, you know, low quiescent current is not that important. As long as a dropout is low enough and it's pin compatible, it'll work just fine. So um, today what I'm going to try to do is um, find an alternative and one that has a lot of stock so that I can get enough that, you know, and stock it so we can keep all of our STEM IQT boards in stock and um, let our AP2112 sit for the feather boards. So it's like maybe if we divide the stock up, um, we won't end up using a thousand a day because we'll, we'll um, secure that, you know, hard to get part for the boards that really need it. The boards that don't need it, we'll use something that's a little less capable, but hopefully about the same price. Uh, so let's, that's the, that's the story. Um, but definitely like when I saw that, you know, um, our purchaser would be like, Hey, we need an alt for this. I was like, Oh goodness, I got to do this immediately. So, cause you know, again, we use a thousand a day and if we went out of this part, like we pretty much grind to a halt. So let's find an alternative. So Adafruit can stay in business. <laughs> okay. So, um, the part that we're talking about is, um, the AP 2112K and yes, it's out of stock. Um, you know, there'll be some, you know, 16 I can get in like two months. There might be a little bit more um, in October. If I need a whole bunch, um, I'm looking for, you know, maybe 6,000 come in October, but um, I'm not going to get the rest until 2023. Can't wait that long because, again, I use about 1,000 a day. So let's look at this. So, again, this is a 3.3 regulator. 
lead time 80 weeks. Exciting. Um, but let's find something that's similar enough. Again, the quiescent current isn't that important to me and the current output's not that important. We just have to keep in mind the dropout. I want about, you know, 0.2 to 0.4 volts. Um, again, the current we're using is so low, it doesn't matter, but it does have to be a low dropout. I can't use like an LT117 with like a massive one volt dropout. It's just, I need something um, very light because sometimes you'll give it 3.3 volts and you want about 3.3 volts on the other side. So it's 3.3 volts output. It's a one fixed positive and I want it to be active. I want it to be surface mount and it should, uh, I want to enable, but I'm not 100% sure that that isn't another name as well. And then um, the reason I'm not picking the supplier device is because thought 25 is the same as thought 23.5. And I think like sometimes the package names are kind of like, you know, they're split between them. So I want to be able to make sure that I can select all the options. And again, uh, output current isn't important, quiescent current, PSSR, they're all going to be about the same. And then protection features, I'm not too worried about because almost all of them have the same features. Okay, so um, the output um, input maximum, I do want it to be at least, um, well, let's just say five volts, um, but it can go up, you know, to whatever. Um, but definitely it can't be less than that because I need I definitely need to have all my boards take five volt input. Um, then for the package, again, there's a lot of SOT 23s. There's SOT 25, SOT 25.5, SOT 23.5, SOT 23.5 DC. There's like a huge number. So I'm going to try to um, select all of them and, and try to do my best to get all the different names. So the SOT 23.5s. I got those. And then also the SOT 25s. That's another name. That's the thing that really you got to watch out for. Um, I think they might also be called SC74s. Yeah, SC74s are also the same thing. Again, this is um, this is a tricky thing because you want to you want to get any package that's compatible without getting the ones that are not. Okay. Um, next up, uh, so the current output, I don't want anything with less than hundred milliamps out. Um, because I, I just feel like if I'm going to get a regulator, I don't want to have to, some chips want to, you know, have a hundred milliamp peak, like, um, you know, the VL 53s, um, actually those use a 2.8 volt, but like there are some sensors that use, you know, they, they can have a little bit of a pipe, uh, spike in current. Um, let's see some of the light sensors, especially because they, they, put a burst of IR out. So I think 100 milliamps is my minimum. I really want something that's in stock right now. So, which you know, takes it from 1,000 to 100. Um, and then the dropout is, you know, dropouts are kind of calculated in a weird way because they're like, it depends on the output of the regulator. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, check that on, you know, the board itself. And, and see what's up. Okay, so the next step is I do want to kind of try to keep it to the, about the same price. And the price I pay for the AP2112s um, on DigiKey, I think is like about 10, 10-ish cents, maybe 12 cents. I, you know, there's there's always gonna be regulators that are 75 cents a piece. I can't afford that because the boards I'm putting them on, um, they need to be affordable. They need to be low cost. Um, I, I just need a basic regulator. I don't need, you know, the end all be all. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the combination of the price and stock numbers. So again, I, I can't really um, go with something that's only 6,000 pieces in stock because like that's six days. It's not worth it for me to do a revision if it's only six days worth of stock. So what I'm going to look at is the ones that are like, ooh, like 192. Like that's, you know, if I use 1,000 a day and I get 190,000, that takes me to the end of the year. And so I can at least float my current inventory that long. So let's look at the AP2002K, which actually sounds kind of great because it's like similar to the AP2112K. Um, it's a smaller, uh, let's see, it's so this one. It's fixed. It has a higher voltage input. Usually that means that the dropout's a little higher. It looks like it is a little higher, um, but it might be okay. The quiescence is also a little bit higher. Um, again, not, uh, not uncommon, but it has the overcurrent over temperature and reverse polarity. So let's look at 
the data sheet. Um, so yeah, this is a standard um, regulator has pretty low uh, LDL. One thing that I will say that just to watch out for is it does have a bypass pin. Um, so the regulator I use now does not require a bypass pin, either has some built-in capacitance or it's just uh, stabilized or it's compensated inside. Um, so the only thing to watch out for is this, if you don't, if I'm using it in a board with that, that doesn't have that bypass cap spot because no board that currently exists has that that I've designed, um, I just have to make sure that it's not, it won't go unstable and um, the noise isn't going to be too high. So you can check through the data sheet because they will have higher noise. That said, the higher noise might be the same as the current regulator I have. And as long as you know that's true, I'm good to go. Um, another thing to watch out for is some of these regulators are not stable with ceramic capacitors. I've seen that. I've seen some that are like, I, they need high ESR capacitors on the output, which is like really, tricky because you think like, oh, like lower ESR is better. Yes, except when that extra resistance adds um, a little bit of delay, a little bit of stability to your regulator. So just make sure that um, it can use uh, ceramic caps. It's, it's unusual these days to not see that. Um, but uh, you can like Google for ESR. Um, looks like here they're actually like lower ESR is fine and there's no uh, stability and then Sometimes you can search for ceramic. If they don't mention it, then it's it's probably fine. But um, true, yeah. They don't have anything about electrolytics. So yeah, this looks like it'll probably be just fine, stable with uh, ceramic caps. So this is one option. But again, want to watch that noise, see what that's like. Um, the rest of these, there's not that many. Um, then there's this one, the AP7380. Uh, so that one has 120,000 stocks. So that's a good option. Um, but I didn't like this high voltage dropout. So the voltage dropout is 1.5 volts, which is like way too high. Uh, you know, I, I need it to be, the other one, remember, was 0.4 at 600 milliamps, which means it's going to be like 50 millivolts at, you know, 100 milliamps or so. Um, I could deal with like, you know, maybe again, like, 0.2 or whatever, 0.3, but 1.5 is is right out. Uh, so I'm not going to look at the AP7380. Um, the next one that has a lot of stock is this one, the AP7358, uh, 54. It's a little bit more expensive. Now we're getting into 17 cents compared to, you know, 8 cents or whatever. Um, but uh, this one is 150 milliamp output. Um, very low quiescent current, which is kind of impressive. And the dropout's okay. It's, you know, 0.35. Um, and this one, let's load the data sheet. Uh, this one doesn't need the bypass cap. Um, you know, it, uh, so it's maybe low noise. has pretty good accuracy. Uh, range up to 5.5 volts. So this is also probably a good option, I think, for... This one, the AP7354 and the AP2202K, I would just check the noise and the dropout and compare it <coughs> for like about 50 to 100 milli milliamps. How does it compare to the AP2112K? Um, it could be that for some higher current breakouts, I would still stick with that AP2112K because like I know it works as good at the higher um, output uh, current. But for like a BME 280, you know, it's cool to, to swap it out. It really doesn't matter what regulator you use. All, the, all of them are going to act the same. Um, and I would just do a revision. Uh, and until, you know, I get another gigantic shipment of the regulator I'm looking for, I would just swap it out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm starting to do more of these dynamic swaps. Um, definitely like MOSFETs I can't get, diodes I can't get. I'll just find the equivalent uh, part that has the same specifications. Um, swap it in. I'll just make a revision note. Um, but I won't necessarily separate the stock because if the part is really equivalent enough uh, and it passes test it won't it's not going to make a difference and, and a regulator like this um, as long as the noise is within reason and the dropouts about the same again you're not going to notice uh, much difference for uh, low current uses so this is how I'm going to try to get through this uh, part shortage uh, being flexible and uh, creative um, so those are the two two chips I recommend. Um, I think this one probably is going to be a better fit, uh, but I'm going to get some samples of both and try them out.
that's a great search.